It's still very scary to wake up knowing that you could not return home the next day. It's still very threatening to know that um, you could face death any time if the bill goes through. And even, even if the bill doesn't go through, just the mere fact that there's a lot of incitement of hatred within the country, it feels insecure to, to know that anything could happen to you even on the streets. We've been thrown out of public places before. We've been beaten before. I've, I've faced a lot of violence before. If the bill, of course, passes, some of us who are very visible will have to be maybe reprimanded or reported or arrested immediately because the bill entitles people to report suspected homosexuals. And some of us are very visible. Already we are facing attacks for being visible. So should the bill go through, um, of course, whoever will be around us will have to report us to save their lives because they will also, if they don't report us and someone has seen them with us, they will have to report them. Some of the articles in the bill are really, really absurd, like the, the proposal of death penalty because it's already illegal, homosexual acts are already illegal in Uganda and they carry a maximum of life imprisonment. But our politicians and some church leaders feel that life imprisonment is still weak a lot to deal with the issue of homosexuality. So they are proposing death penalty for some cases. And also they build some of the articles propose reporting uh, suspected homosexuals, that my brother has to report me to the police, that my neighbor has to report me to the police, my landlord has to report me to the police. Even just me being here today and addressing you would mean that if the bill goes through, I would be liable for life imprisonment. So the effects of the bill are not only for LGBT, um, Ugandans, but the whole of the country, because if you fail to report a suspected homosexual, you're also liable to imprisonment. Any organization that is working on human rights issues and also deals with LGBT issues, because LGBT issues are human rights issues, will also be closed down. So it's not only affecting gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender Ugandans, it's affecting the whole nation. You find many Ugandans who actually never had a problem with homosexuals but they've been incited by anti-gay groups who have told a lot of lies that we are promoting homosexuality, that we are recruiting children into homosexuality. And this has changed the attitudes of the people who never minded at all. So this becomes a threat. Actually, I'm even more scared of my community members than even the police or the government itself, because these are the people that are being mobilized to bash us. And these are people who are always shouting insults, how they want to teach you how to be a proper woman. These are the people who are always trying to threaten us. These are people who are always saying they're going to burn our offices, our houses down. So these are the people that have been mobilized by the anti-gay groups to attack us. I know the anti-gay movement in Uganda is driven by money. Very many rich churches, in especially U.S., are the ones who are funding the anti-gay movement in Uganda because they fail to really, to, to, to really make an influence in their own country. So they are taking advantage of a very poor nation in U like Uganda to, to, to drive their agendas. And that's why we are actually suing the evangelicals who came from America to Uganda who were behind the, pro the proposed anti-homosexuality bill. We are in court with them on, on the U.S. soil because, um, because they came and incited uh, violence within our country, within our politicians, and this is how the anti-gay uh, bill was proposed. But we said we need to hold them accountable. You cannot come from wherever you come from and just come and start creating all these lies about us recruiting, about us trying to, to work in all clinics to kill children because we do not believe in the family. So we are holding them accountable in the U.S. courts. And uh, we, we had our first hearing last uh, early this month, actually on the 7th of January. And now we are waiting to see if we are going to go on trial with them.